Welcome to Coffees and Prophecies. I'm Betty. And I'm Cliff. And together, we're giving you a few potential possible translations of the infamous prophecies of Nostradamus. Before we got together and worked on the translations video for Century 1 Quatrain 1, Cliff took a long hard look at the quatrain and then did a tarot reading to try and get a feeling about it. That's right. I did the full reading and wrote down all of my feelings and thoughts in a journal. I know not everyone is interested in a side helping of tarot with their Nostradamus predictions, so that's why Betty and I have decided to put the tarot reading discussions in a separate video. This video, is that separate video. If you haven't yet checked out our first video, you can find it on the screen right now, and also in the description below this. In the first one, we talk you through our interpretations of Century 1, Quatrain 1 in Nostradamus Prophecies. In this video, Cliff is going to do a tarot reading for the first quatrain, and then he'll let us know his thoughts and opinions about those cards. That's right. So, let's jump right in. I spent a few minutes debating on what kind of spread I should use for this tarot reading, but in the end, I figured it made sense just to keep things simple. I decided to go with four cards, for the four lines of the quatrain. So, what cards do you have? Here are the four cards I pulled out, in order. At the top, we have the Nine of Pentacles, reversed. The second card is the Page of Cups. The third card is the Knight of Pentacles. The fourth and final card is the Strength card, reversed. I actually don't know the first thing about tarot reading, apart from what I've accidentally learned from you, Cliff. What are these cards saying to you about Century 1, Quatrain 1? The first things that jump out at me about this reading is that two Pentacles cards have come out. Not only that, the first three cards are minor arcana cards, with the fourth and final one being a major arcana card. Minor arcana cards are used to represent the small, day-to-day -day actions of life. When you pull a major arcana card, such as the strength card, it represents a much bigger decision or situation. It's not just a day-to-day, -day, small decision. It's a large one, that could have massive repercussions in life, both good and bad. The thing with tarot cards is that one card is just one chapter of a much bigger story. You won't get the bigger picture from just one card. You need to look at all of them together. So, only when you look at them together can you figure out the greater meaning of the message. Does that make sense? It does make sense. What do you notice first about the Nine of Pentacles card Betty? It's a very yellow card. That's right. It is very yellow. In fact, this reading is quite yellow all over. Yellow in tarot readings usually depicts a higher level of consciousness, intelligence, and intuition. It is also a very warming color, and a very young, innocent and carefree color. If the Nine of Pentacles had been turned the right way around, this card would be quite a positive one. Unfortunately, because it's reversed, the meaning turns a little more sinister. But, the fact that the reading is mostly yellow indicates that it has a generally positive meaning to it. The Pentacles suit is normally associated with money, right? Yes, and all things surrounding money or material possessions. It could be actual belongings, a home, how much money someone has in the bank, business deals that might be coming up, employment status, that kind of thing. I'm assuming, because the card is reversed, that the meaning is bad. Losing a business deal or home, or something like that. Yes, sadly, but not just life events like that. There are a number of important keywords that are linked to the suit of pentacles when it is in reverse, such as greedy and selfish, lazy, boring, dull, workaholics, overworked, overinvestment, covetous, etc. In reverse, the nine of pentacles is commonly associated with being hopeless. As you can see, when the card is upside down, the pentacles could fall down. If the card was the right way up, the person on the card would be surrounded with pentacles which are sometimes seen as coins, indicating that they are sitting back and enjoying something in abundance. So because the card is in reverse, it would indicate a period of financial instability. Yes. Perhaps Nostradamus felt forced to release his prophecies in Les Prophetes because he needed the money, or recognition, or something along those lines. In reverse, the Nine of Pentacles can also represent being neglectful of the important things around you. 
So, perhaps it was the case that Nostradamus was paying too much attention on his prophecies and work, and not enough attention on himself, or his family. All the while he was gaining financial reward or recognition, he was losing the important family bonds around him. On one hand, he was gaining, but on the other hand, he was losing. He wasn't getting the opportunity to enjoy the benefits of his hard work, or pay attention to the important things in life. That's definitely one way to interpret it. But I'm guessing that the second and subsequent cards might help to make a little more sense of the reading. Exactly. The page of cups is the second card down, and the next one I pulled out. And this card isn't in reverse. No, it isn't. And the suit of cups is usually linked to feelings rather than personal belongings or wealth. This card could indicate the connections Nostradamus has with the people around him. Perhaps the relationship he has with his wife and children, mentors, etc. It could even be the relationship he has with himself, how he defines himself, what he's worth, what happiness means to him. It's also the only card that isn't mostly yellow, though it does have some yellow at the bottom there. That's right. But, let's take a closer look at the card and see what else we can see. What can you see, Betty? The young boy is holding a cup. I'm assuming, and it has a fish in it. The fish in the cup is a surprise to the young page. You wouldn't usually expect to see a fish in your cup of water, would you? No, I suppose you wouldn't. What does that represent? It could be that creativity came out of the blue, completely taking Nostradamus by surprise. Perhaps he wasn't expecting for his prophecies to be taken seriously, or even to experience them at all. He could have been just as shocked to see into the future as we are at the thought of him being able to look into the future. Nostradamus also became quite popular following the plague. He was a plague doctor and was said to have prescribed fresh air, fresh bed linen, lots of water, and rose hips to plague-afflicted patients. Many of them survived even though medicine men like Nostradamus didn't really have the proper knowledge to understand how diseases like the plague worked. The rose hips just so happen to contain high levels of vitamin C, which is recommended when you're feeling under the weather because it has so many positive effects on the body. That's very true. So, perhaps the fish out of the cup, or the creativity and opportunity out of the blue, could have been the plague itself, the fact that he managed to cure so many people despite not being able to fully understand the disease. And then, following the publication of Les Prophetes, also known as Centuries, he attracted the support of some pretty big deal royals in France. This would have been quite the shock for a man who had basically had to hide the way he worked for so many years because he was afraid of coming up against the church and other important people. The page is often seen as a card that indicates you need to look inside yourself, and because this is the page of cups, a suit that is linked to emotions and creativity, it could be the case that Nostradamus had to look deep within himself and trust his gut instincts. Other people may not have believed him, but he believed in himself. That belief could have been the thing that came out of the blue, like the fish in a cup. Or, as the quatrain has been traditionally translated as, an image in a bowl of water. Other message that are linked to this card are new proposals of marriage, new babies, new relationships, new creative projects, or new emotional epiphanies. Basically, it indicates a big surprise that comes out of nowhere but ends up being quite pleasant. Now, let's look at the third card, the Knight of Pentacles. This is our second Pentacles card. Another very yellow card, and upright. Yes, and if you take a closer look at what the card depicts, you might get a sense of what it represents and means. Okay, there's a knight on a black horse, and he's holding what looks like a coin or pentacle. That's right. The knight isn't going anywhere. He's stationary, still, waiting for a moment, and he's looking at the pentacle or coin in his hands. He's taking a moment to look at the offer or prize that's right in his grasp before he carries on. Keywords associated with the Knight of Pentacles card include routine, hard work, being productive, and a good work ethic. If you look behind the knight on his horse, you'll see that fields have been plowed. They're neat and tidy. This is representative of being able to do the boring, back-breaking grunt work that is often required to get the job done and to manifest your dreams. It is a card that shows working systematically and carefully in order to achieve the goals or dreams you have set for yourself. 
So, it could be the case that Nostradamus was surprised with all of the good offers, financial rewards, and recognition that came with his plague doctor work, and also his prophecies, and, after taking a step back to see what was being offered to him, he decided to work hard, get it done, and then work methodically to get there. Yes, that could very well be the case. Or, it could be the case that he has already done the hard work, and now he's sitting back, looking at his freshly plowed fields enjoying the fruits of his labor before he carries on with his journey. And, going back to what we mentioned earlier about the emotional card nine of pentacles reversed, that could be about his connections with friends and family, perhaps the hard working and long hours could have dragged him away from his family. Those opportunities were only going to come along once in a lifetime, or so we imagine. He had to jump on them when he had the chance, and he did but to the potential detriment of his bonds with family, friends, loved ones, etc. That makes sense. What else can you tell us about the Knight of Pentacles? Well, knights are known as the messengers of the tarot world, and they go around, delivering news to the masses, which is definitely what Nostradamus did. Or tried to do at least. It's a very fitting card, that's for sure. The final card is strength, and this one is reversed. Another yellow card, and I'm assuming it's not going to be an overly pleasant one, if the card is reversed. Strength reversed can actually be seen as quite an unpleasant card, and I'm wondering if it would be regarding the later years of Nostradamus's life. The major arcana card would point to a large life event rather than the smaller, day-to-day running of things. The keywords commonly associated with the strength card in reverse include being neglectful, having a lot of self-doubt, lazy, lack of self-control, missing opportunities in your career, and or disruption to a plan, whether that's career or travel related. It can also be linked to manipulating, as in trying to manipulate another person, as well as forcing a decision or situation and having a lack of consideration for other people's feelings. I would just like to put an idea forward that I don't really want to say out loud. Focusing on a few of the things you've just mentioned, such as being manipulating, forcing decisions or situations, and having a lack of consideration, could it be that Nostradamus didn't believe he could foresee the future at all? It wasn't until after he'd written an almanac in the year 1550 that he first started to garner attention, and he supposedly only created the almanac to jump on what were considered to be popular trends at the time. I know that we won't want to admit this because it would make all of our alternative translations totally useless, but maybe Nostradamus was a fraud all along. It's been said by a lot of historians and experts that his prophecies were super vague and therefore could be applied to virtually any kind of situation, with some tweaking. And, it's a pretty well-known truth that Nostradamus used older, already published works as inspiration for his own work. The Bible was said to have been borrowed, and I use the term loosely, for some of his prophecies, as well as pieces that appear to have been outright stolen from other historians of the time. Almost word-for-word excerpts have been copied from a 1549-1550 publication by the pseudonym Arcandum, assumed to be physician Richard Roussat, called Livre de la Stat et Mutations des Temps. Copying other people's work is not cool people. No, it is not. But is anything really original anymore? Every idea has been inspired by something else. You make a very good point. But Nostradamus didn't necessarily take inspiration from those other works. He actually used some of them word for word. Yeah, we can't really excuse his behavior there. Perhaps that's what is meant by the possible manipulation representation in the strength card reversed. Maybe Nostradamus manipulated people into believing that other people's words and ideas were his own? The strength card reversed can also be representative of bending over backwards to make someone else happy, which would certainly follow on from our hard-working and patient knight of pentacles. Once that 1550 almanac came out, the royal connection was well and truly forged, with Catherine de' Medici, also known as the Queen Regent or Consort of France. She was said to have been quite a strong-willed, ruthless and sometimes unforgiving woman, and there have been rumors abound of her having dalliances with the occult, although there is no actual evidence of that. Nostradamus did do a lot for Catherine though. He was said to have made talismans for the royal at her request, traveled great distances to have long audiences with her, created horoscopes and astrological charts for all seven of her children, and more. 
It wouldn't be a stretch to say that he bent over backwards for her and her family, especially when she awarded him the impressive title of physician in ordinary, which was said to have paid a princely sum and offered him a whole host of other awards. If he'd struggled throughout his life, and we don't really know whether he did or didn't, it wouldn't be a stretch to assume that he wouldn't have minded putting in the hard work to get decent rewards out of it, even if it meant literally breaking his own back. He left a fair amount of money and some estate behind for his wife and children when he died. Maybe he did all of it to ensure that they had a good life. He lost his first family because of the plague, so maybe he felt like he had to bend over backwards to give this family everything they needed. For a plague doctor that went on to treat and cure people, it must have been terrible for him not to have been able to save his own family. Maybe he thought of the hard work afterwards, providing for his second family, as some kind of repentance? That's definitely worth bearing in mind. Now that we've seen all of the cards, do you have anything else you'd like to add about the reading? Or has something else sprung out at you? I definitely think the things you've said could easily apply to Nostradamus and his life. Although it must be noted that these cards make no reference to predicting the motorcycle that we came up with in our alternative translation of Century 1, Quatrain 1. That made me laugh. No, no motorcycles here. When I started the reading, I meditated and asked the cards to tell us more about what Nostradamus was thinking when he sat down and started to write his quatrains. I feel like the reading tells us that Nostradamus dealt with a whopping portion of imposter syndrome, or he didn't believe that he deserved all of the recognition and good stuff that happened to him, and that maybe he bent over backwards and worked damn hard to get all of the rewards and recognition that he did. I also believe the reading tells us that the things he came across in his life, such as wealth and those royal connections, really did pop out of the blue, completely unexpected. I think I believe that too. A lot of the information about Nostradamus online contradicts itself and so many reports have different snippets of information, so it's hard for us to get a sense of the real truth when it comes to his life. I do believe that it would have been hard work for him to foretell the future, however. He would have dealt with problems from all angles with some of his ways of working and beliefs, especially when he was saying that bad things were going to happen, which he was saying, quite a lot. This is just my interpretation of the cards that were dealt, of course. If you're watching this and you're a tarot reader, experienced or otherwise, and you get a different message from these cards, I'd love to hear about it. Get involved by leaving your comments in the space below this video. Or, why not make your own video and let us know about it by providing a link in the comments. I would also love to know what you think. I know very little about tarot but I'm slowly picking up bits and pieces from videos I watch on YouTube, and also from what Cliff is teaching me. Thank you for that, Cliff, by the way. You're most welcome. I'm not the most experienced tarot reader in the world, but I have been doing it for a few years. I'm still very interested to learn other people's interpretations of the cards though. Everyone picks up on the cards and their symbols in different ways. It's a very intuitive practice. So viewers, let us know what you want to see next from Cliff regarding tarot readings. Yes, I'm definitely interested in doing more readings and honing my skill a little more. Do you have a question that you're dying to ask, or a problem that you'd like a little spiritual guidance with? Ask me. Throw your questions in the space for comments below this video. For now, we're going to close this video, but we'll be right back with a new alternative translation really soon. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Ciao, for now.